Hello and good morning. Um, I just came back from the grocery store. Thought I would do a quick haul and um, just keep everybody updated on the uh, projects we have coming up on the YouTube channel. All right, here we go. We're going to... This is a Costco haul. I'm going to start right here. I don't know if you've never had these. These are great. It tastes like soda, but it's good for you. It's got prebiotics and probiotics. But I can't always have the caffeine of kombucha. So that's what this is. It's a little gut health. Now, I got to tell you something really funny about these. Um, so there's a little like convenience store not too far from where I live. And they have like a little grill. And this is probably one of their most popular uh, meals. And I get it, you know, fairly often whenever we need a takeout option that's real close by. Um, but I found it at Costco. I think this is their secret. I'll let you know. Um, I got some bins because I'm going to tackle organizing my crazy half freezer. I'm not quite used to having the side by side, so needs a little help. Got some more sweet organic cherries. Those were awesome. We freeze dried a bunch and we ate them all because they were like candy. I think I'm gonna keep these for smoothies and that kind of thing. Potential cherry pie in the future. Um, I got some raw shrimp and these are tail off. I don't know about y'all, but is that like the hardest thing to find? I don't know, for some reason, every time you find raw shrimp, they always have the tail on. Uh, organic broccoli florets. These are multiple bags, so like four bags. So this will come out of this giant bag and fit a little better in the freezer, I think. Uh, we got some cheese because my child is making tomato soup and grilled cheeses tonight. Turkey breast. Um, we heard from an inside source, friend of a friend that works at a major poultry provider of our nation. And that person told the other person, you better get your turkeys for Thanksgiving right now because there's going to be a shortage. Um, I think that we generally get these anyway to slice for uh, turkey meat for the week for like lunch meat and stuff. So I'm going to have one of those, but I'm just going to tuck one away just in case um, it comes Thanksgiving and it's crazy town. There's only three of us. We're gonna invite a family that we know over. So a turkey breast should be just fine. And I'll have other things too, so. Um, I got some organic ginger. This falls into the category of, I always need it, but I never have it on hand um, that I'm trying to stay ahead of. So I am going to peel this all and throw it in the food processor and freeze dry it and put it in its own container. So I'm super excited about that project coming up um same with the mushrooms love shiitake mushrooms um baby bella mushrooms never have them on hand they're a huge pain to keep fresh because they always go bad so we're gonna slice them all up get them in the freeze dryer and never worry about it again um i got some italian sausage ravioli i don't know never gotten this before it's just a try the ingredients weren't horrific um, so this might be just a quick night, um, dinner when we don't want to cook, but this I'm pretty excited about. Have y'all seen this? The root vegetables mix. Wow. Sweet potatoes, butternut squash, parsnips, kale, sweet and dried cranberries, and olive oil. That sounds like something I would make myself. Super excited to have five small bags of that as a side dish. Another birdie told me that... The price of butter is skyrocketing, and it is true. Um, these four things were like $16, I think, at, uh, at Costco. I think they were about the same. Um, this is it. You might notice these are one-pound sticks. These are four one-pound sticks. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to can it. Um, that is a rebel canning project that is not approved by the uh, USDA or whatever the national canning, I can never remember the national canning and food preservation association. Um, so this is a rebel canning project. I saw this on, um, Homestead Heart. 
definitely going to get these into some smaller, like maybe half pint jars. And the reason being is because when we use butter, we put it in this little French butter bell. Um, and so I think that would be probably like a half pint. So I'm excited to have that on the pantry shelf. Um, got some thighs to can up and I canned some thighs last time. And I have to tell you, I, I'm always disappointed when they siphon. So this time I am, I've got a strategy. I'm going to pull all the skins off and stick them on the top of the jar. Uh, after I've packed the chicken in, just have like the top half be skins because oftentimes if the chicken is sticking out of the liquid, it will darken, depending on how long you have it, it will darken and not look as appetizing. So the skins will make the broth that needs to go in there and it'll also be the buffer between um, the chicken looking dark and me using the chicken. So I'm excited about that new strategy. I'll let you know how it goes. That's another project you're going to see on the YouTube channel. This, I also, I got these because I love them. They're so much easier than messing with Brussels sprouts, and I love a good Brussels sprouts. Um, this has got great ingredients. Um, let's see if I can show you here. Hopefully it gives you a chance to kind of see what's in them. Just stuff I would put in them myself. Anytime I find a product like that, I'm willing to keep that around. This again is five, uh, four pouches, ready in five minutes. Um, did a little, uh, yesterday I bought a giant two gallon cookie jar and my thought process was this. I have eggs glassing on the counter and I had them in two different jars and I think I had, hmm, I don't know, maybe like three dozen? close to three dozen. So I was like, you know what? I'd like to put some more in there. I have more fresh eggs, but I don't want to take up all the counter space. So I got a two gallon cookie jar and this is what it looks like. Boom. I got all of the eggs from both jars. I had two jars. I had another jar over here and still have room to groove. I could add probably another, I don't know, two dozen maybe. It's, it's a lot. Um, so anyway, if you don't know about glassing eggs, that is a way to, uh, preserve them and keep them through the winter. We did it last year. I preserved, uh, over six dozen eggs and they got us all through the winter. In fact, the only reason we used them all up was because we were moving across the country. So that would be a thing that you just really can't move. Um, but yeah, they worked great and we loved it. So as the weather is getting cooler, we're just, you know, our chickens are kind of ramping down a little bit in their production. So I think we're getting like two every day. Every day is different. Some days we'll get one, some days we'll get five. Um, but we're also making some changes to their coop and their living situation. So um, it could be that. Also, they have a new chick to integrate into the flock. So there's definitely some things going on there. Anyway, um, I've got some projects coming up on the YouTube channel at Quiet Life Homestead. I um, hope you'll join me there if you want to see some butter getting canned or some chicken getting canned or what else. We're going to freeze dry some stuff. We're going to do the mushrooms freeze dried. We're going to do ginger freeze dried. And is that it? Is that all? Yeah, whatever else we come up with. Oh, we've been foraging goldenrod. Uh like right outside of my property, there's a big wild patch of goldenrod. So I got a whole bunch. I put it in the freeze dryer. I want to show it to you because it is so, so pretty. Um, I'm going to try it out. It's supposed to make good tea. It's supposed to be good for different ailments, different things. But I don't know if you can even see it. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so that's the flowers. And here is the leaves. And you can definitely make a tea out of that clearly I plan to get more and then the other you know I freeze dried those jalapenos last night and so I've got an abundance of jalapenos those were homegrown from a co-worker's gardens we were super happy to have those and those are now on the pantry ready to go for uh, oh that's the other thing I'm gonna make I am going to make a most delicious 
jam and I want to show it to you because it's so, so pretty. Um, I think this inspiration came from Linda's pantry. She makes a, some kind of pepper cranberry jam. Well, and I was, I always make this uh, cranberry pineapple relish every year for Thanksgiving. And so I thought, oh, let me combine jalapeno and my cranberry pineapple relish. Um, but anyway, isn't that so pretty? We made it into a jam. Um, I gave it away for some gifts and this is, um, was a big hit. So we like to have it with chicken. It's wonderful on turkey sandwiches, um, ham sandwiches, pretty much anything. It's a, it's not as much jalapeno as I think I would like, but that's one reason I wanted to have those jalapenos on a shelf because I think sometimes when you use jalapeno, maybe you don't really want it spicy, but you don't realize that when you cook jalapeno, it mellows way out. It's kind of like garlic in that way. Um, so last year, I think I put like one jalapeno in a bunch of jam. I think I did like two batches. And unfortunately, it kind of cooked out. You really didn't even taste it. So in my notes, uh, I recommend that you keep a canner, a canning log of things that were successful and things that weren't so successful that you want to change things for next year. Um, and that's been super valuable to me. Also, I use it to um, date the batches that I've done of something. So like, you know, if you just put the, the month or the year on what you can and you find out that either one of them has gone bad, it's really hard to like, let's say, okay, let me, let me explain what I mean. Let's say you're canning carrots and this happened to a friend of mine. So I know that this is a, is a possibility. You're canning carrots and you have, you know, one batch July 1st and you do a canning, you did a whole bunch of carrots and you just put either July of the year or you just put the year and you didn't worry about anything. Well, two weeks later, you harvested some more carrots and you decided to do another batch, okay? So you did another batch. Well, let's say a week later, somebody gifts you some carrots and you do another batch of carrots. Well, you go to the pantry shelf and you find out that one of them is weird. It's off, doesn't smell good, doesn't look right. Um, or you open it up and you're like, oh, whatever seasoning I used or I, Ugh, this was disgusting. There is no way for you to tell necessarily, and this, you know, maybe breaks down an analogy, but no way for you to tell which carrots, which July carrots even, are the ones you need to go back and take care of. Maybe you need to check on them to see if they sealed because you found one that didn't seal or you found three that didn't seal or you find mold growing on one or whatever. That's an extreme case because if you can things correctly, you really shouldn't find that and you store them properly. Um, but my friend was showing me her pantry. She was pulling out a jar of carrots. The lid came right off and she was kind of like, oh, that's weird. I didn't know the lid came off. And then she pulled out another jar, but she had so many carrots that there was absolutely no way to know which batch was which. So I say all that to say, if you haven't tried a canning logbook, I recommend it. Even if you're just canning single ingredients, just to put on there like what you did. I'm famous for putting a spice blend in something that I will literally never be able to recreate. So take it from me. I taught a, tan a canning class and that was one of the things that I recommended was do yourself a favor, just put the actual date. It has been so helpful for me to look back at the chicken that I had canned and it was the first, the first thing I ever canned was chicken. And it was November of, I mean, uh, September of 2020. And so it's so satisfying to go back. All my jars are labeled with the actual dates because I did multiple batches of chicken in 2020. And I want to use the oldest one first, even if it's oldest by two weeks or three weeks. So if I had just had 2020 on there or just had September, I would, I had multiple batches of chicken. 
So um, I say all that, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but it's just been something that's been really uh, critical, at least to me. So that helped me figure out what I'm going to do differently with my cranberry pineapple jalapeno relish this year. And I'm really excited. And the fact that we're going to have freeze-dried jalapenos and put them in so that they don't process as long, that's the other thing. When you cook the jalapeno at the same time as everything else, it, it just basically disappears. So I'm going to wait until um, the last minute, stir in the freeze-dried jalapenos, which will basically be raw, and then just the processing time, which I think is like 10 minutes for the jam or whatever. So that's the plan. If you want to see any of those recipes, uh, hit me up on YouTube and I'll see you there.